There are a lot of reasons to start a food forest. I think the most common reason in today's world is general uncertainty of where the world is heading. Inflation, possible food shortages, people are very concerned about food security. A food forest is a pretty good way to grow your own food and provide some abundance for your family and friends. So let me show you this easy method of starting food forest. I have this little guava tree that I want to plant today. Instead of just putting the tree in the ground and being done, I'm going to create an island and I'm going to add fertility to this tree. Fertility that's going to last for years. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick up the trash from last time. And then the second thing I'm going to do is clear the ground on this area a little bit. This material that I'm raking up is going to go around the edges of the island. Now I'll dig a hole that's about twice the diameter of the pot. And it doesn't have to be too deep because this is a small pot. You want the top of the soil from the pot to be just above ground level. It's a little bit too deep. Put a handful of soil in there. That looks pretty good. Fill the hole back up. The soil here is already fairly moist because it's rained a lot lately, but I'm still going to add just a little bit of water. I have this cart full of material that I've been saving for something like this. It's uh, material that we pruned in our landscaping. It's been sitting in this cart for about a month, so it's already started to break down. I'm going to dump it on top of the bare soil. I want to put this below the cardboard that I'm going to add. And if you're going to dump it like this, try not to destroy your tree. As an added bonus, there's a bunch of water in there. I'll just spread this around a little bit. And there's no right or wrong method to this. I do it a little bit different every time. Basically all you're trying to do is add layers of fertility here. It's the same thing as lasagna gardening. I'll save this for last. All right, cardboard is next. Before you lay the cardboard down, you need to prepare it by removing any tape and then creating a mess on the ground. Domino's pizza boxes work great. Especially for around the fruit tree where you need precision and accuracy. This cardboard is well seasoned. It's going to break down fairly quickly. There we go. Cardboard is finished. Add some moisture to the cardboard layer. This is some rainwater that has a little pond plants growing in it. So I'm also adding fertility. The next step is adding a layer of fertility, chop and drop, on top of the cardboard. I'll take a stroll around the food forest and find some different sources for that fertility. Source number one is weeds. Those are giant Florida native legumes. Poisonous to eat, but great for chop and drop. I want those. I should have wore snake boots. Fantastic. I'll grab some Mexican sunflower. It's plentiful around the food forest and it's a dynamic accumulator, meaning it's bringing up all kinds of different nutrients from the soil. And it's very, very high in nitrogen, which is what plants need to grow. Cart's filling up, but we need more. This here used to be an oak tree 
it was blown over by Hurricane Ian. And since then, it has dozens of shoots coming up. Those shoots will become trunks someday. I'll be able to chop these shoots off the trunks for years and years. You can actually do something similar on your land. It's called polis. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Correct me if I'm wrong. You cut a tree so that the trunk is a few feet tall and it'll put up shoots. Then you can harvest those shoots and you'll be able to do that over and over and over as long as the trunk and the roots stay healthy. That's good. I'll just take a handful for now. The rest of it I'm going to use to help populate my raised beds. Now we throw down some of this locally sourced chop and drop to add fertility to this island. Give our fruit tree some breathing room. Add a little more H2O. Got some oak chips here. These are seasoned for about two years, so it's actually about half compost, half mulch. I'm gonna put this on the outer edges to start. You can plant directly in this. A lot of the perennials will have no problem growing. These wood chips are kind of a commodity. They're hard to come by lately. The last time I got a free load was two years ago. If I had more of them, I would just dump piles on here, but I have to use them sparingly. Okay, let's dump the rest right on the pile. Let's break it in a little bit. Make sure all the cardboard is covered up. That looks decent. And of course, we want to add other plants in here. I'm also going to plant some seeds. These seeds will more than likely root right into this mulch because it's really compost. So I'm just mixing these seeds together. We have butterfly pea. Daikon radish. I've got uh, mimosa, which is the sensitive plant, and I have some ground cherry as well. I'm going to broadcast. And what grows, grows. Doesn't grow. Oh well. I hope you enjoyed my video on how to create a fast and easy food forest island. If you're curious about what kind of perennial vegetables you can add to an island like this, watch this video right up here. I talk about some of the staple crops you can grow in Florida. And don't miss the next video in this series where I talk about divide and conquer and how we come together to create a food forest by attaching these islands, unity. So subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. Thanks for watching.